so basically, yeah, mm. we have already explained to them how ionic bond works. Okay, mm. let's share with them a second type of bonding, which is called covalent bond. Okay. Okay, but but yet again, I'm going to bring out the two excellent ah, teachers to try to explain dogs. this. Okay. Yes, you know, just now our dogs, we we have names for them, mm -hmm. right? So one of them was called sodium, one of them was called chlorine. Mm -hmm. Okay, chlorine is going to remain as chlorine. Okay. But sodium is going to change its name. It's now going to be called hydrogen. Oh. So what I have now are two non-metals. Right, so yet again, they're gonna show us exactly how this thing works, right? So what you can see now, the difference is they are not transferring, but they are sharing, and sharing, sharing is carrying. Mm. So this is what happens in a covalent bond, the sharing of electrons between the two non-metal atoms. Hey, you know, you do realize something, as they are, they are doing two kinds of bonding. You know, there's one of them which is a transfer of electrons, mm -hmm. and one of them is a sharing. Do you know which one they actually prefer? Oh. Sharing ah, because sharing is caring ma. Okay, now I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. Okay, so I'm just gonna rewind the video a little bit, right? You will notice they actually prefer to do sharing. Why? Because they are winking to each other. Can you see? Wink, 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 wink. Oh. Oh. So I'm gonna wink to you. Ding! Ta da! Okay, I know what you're gonna say, alright? Dogs are cute, just uh, like me. Yes. But you cannot do bring dogs to exam. Okay, yes. so you are the better one. Okay, I'm gonna let you take over and explain to the class how this thing works. Yeah, so William, you snatch all my lines, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in terms of a covalent bond, so the covalent bond is usually formed as a result of sharing of electrons. So if you were to look at a hydrogen molecule, right, so the one valence electron from one hydrogen atom is gonna pair up with another valence electron from the other hydrogen atom, forming what we call a covalent bond. Now, a bond is always an electrostatic attraction between a region that is positively charged and a region that is negatively charged. So a covalent bond is better defined as the electrostatic attraction between the shared pairs of electron and the two positively charged nuclei in the middle of the atom. So there's going to be some attraction here, there's going to be some attraction here, and the attractions all together is collectively referred to as the covalent bond. So Mr. Yap, mm -hmm. the covalent bond is by this thing called the sharing of electrons. But there's something new, right? It says over there, the sharing of electrons is made possible by the overlap of atomic orbitals. So atomic orbitals is something they learn in a chapter called atomic structure, mm -hmm. which means they have to revisit the shape of the orbitals, right? So the shapes we have are like the S, S orbital, orbital, the P orbital, orbital the D, D orbital, orbital, and the, the F orbital. orbital. But just for today's lesson, the only things that we are going to require will be the S, S orbital and the P, P orbital. orbital. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. So, William, yep. you know there are actually two types of covalent bonds that can be formed? Oh, yes, there are two types of covalent mm -hmm. bond. Now, the first one is called sigma bond, mm -hmm. and the second one is called pi bond. Pi bond? You mean like the apple pie, chocolate pie, banana pie, that kind of pie? No, 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 not the kind of pie. I think you must be hungry, right? Yeah, pretty much. Eh. It's actually the math pie, you know, the oh. pie, the 3.124? You mean the 3.142? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, 3.142. Sorry, I'm not a math major. <laughs> okay. Right, you see the words uh, sigma and pi, it may sound a little bit intimidating mm. for new students. Mm -hmm. So maybe we use an analogy to explain okay. this. Okay. okay, so what analogy are we going to use? Something exciting. Exciting? Oh, car crash. Car crash is dangerous. Yeah. I used to be a mafia. <laughs> oh, so really? I get involved in a lot of car crashes. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to show you one of my okay, car crashes. Okay. okay, are you ready? Okay. Yeah, okay. So this was me when I was filming Fast and Furious. Wow. Yeah, okay. Hey. So you take a look. Okay, so it's me. Spilo, ah. Huh? And what do you notice? They're gonna do a bang. <laughs> this is a hit on, on collision. Yeah. So we call this a sigma bond. Alright, okay. a sigma means a hit on collision or hit on car crash. Okay. So this is a sigma bond. Sigma hit on car crash. Yes, you're okay. right. Oh, so Mr. Yap, mm. we have already shown them how sigma bond works, which is a hit-on car crash. Right now, I'm going to show you the second type of bonding, which is a side-on car crash. Mm -hmm. Right, so we call this the pi bond. So I'm going to show you a clip which I was involved not too long ago. Oh, you mean William? This is you, ah? You look a bit cake size, yeah? Ay, no lah, no lah. Okay, let me show you what happens. Okay, mm -hmm. so very soon you're going to see a car crash. Eh? Not this one. Yeah. Okay, coming soon. Coming, coming soon. Coming soon. Huh? soon. Yep. Like the movie. Okay, watch, watch, watch. All right, what's happening? Oh, you see the body colliding against the body. Don't yeah. worry, I was fine. No problem. Right? Not injured, huh? No, 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 no I'm okay. fine. That's why I'm here. All right, okay, so this okay. is called okay. pi bond, a side-on overlap. All right, guys, so just remember, a sigma bond and a pi bond basically is a head-on collision versus a side-on collision. Okay. 
So William, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of sigma bonds, different types of orbitals can be involved. Uh, just yep. like in a head-on car crash, uh, different mm-hmm. types of vehicles can be involved. Yes. Okay. So for example, if you were to look at the H2 molecule, mm-hmm. all right. So the first thing you would do is to write down the electronic configuration of the individual atoms involved in the bonding. So hydrogen okay. only has one valence electron, so the electronic configuration is one s one. So the two s orbitals of the hydrogen atoms will overlap with each other, okay. forming a region of overlap as uh, shown on the screen. So that is what we call a head-on car crash or head-on overlap. So this sigma bond right, is formed between an s orbital of one hydrogen and the s orbital of another hydrogen. So it's what we call an ss orbital overlap. All right. So you're saying that the two like uh, the two orbitals is going to move close yeah, towards each other crash and crash into each other. Each other. Right. That's how you form a sigma bond. Yep. Uh, yeah, absolutely right. Okay. Okay, so in terms of uh, another molecule, let's look at the HF molecule. So the electronic configuration of the H atom is shown on the screen, 1s1. One one. Mm-hmm. Fluorine has 9 electrons, so the electronic configuration is shown on the screen as um, uh, over here. Mm-hmm. All right. So the focus would now be on the valence orbital, the outermost orbital, because the outermost electrons are the one involved in bonding. Okay. So if you were to look at this electron in box diagram, one of the p orbital of fluorine has an unpaired electron. So mm-hmm. that orbital will overlap with the s orbital of hydrogen via a head-on car crash, you know, they're moving closer to each other, not into each other. Mm. So there'll be a region of overlap. So this region of overlap is known as the sigma bond. Right? So this sigma bond is formed between an overlap of an S orbital and a P orbital. So this is what we call a SP orbital overlap. I see. Okay. okay? Mm. And the last example, let's look at uh, F2 molecule. Mm-hmm. So once again, electronic configuration written down, focus on the outermost orbital. So in the electron inbox diagram, once again, this p orbital has an unpaired electron. This p orbital also has an unpaired electron. So they both will overlap via a head-on car crash. Mm. So the region of overlap is here. So this is the sigma bond. So this sigma bond is formed by a p orbital and another p orbital. So it's what we call a pp orbital overlap. All right. So in deducing what types of orbitals are involved in forming a sigma bond, the focus is always on the valence orbital because the valence orbital contains the valence electrons and valence electrons are always the one involved in bonding. All right, so Mr. Yap, we are done with sigma bonds. Mm-hmm. Why don't we bring them through the second type of bonding, which is pi bonding. And remember, it means a side-on overlap or a side-on car crash. Yep. All right, let's use this picture on the next page to explain. Now, you can see that it looks like a very complicated mm-hmm. diagram. What is this structure? This structure is actually a molecule called ethene, right? an organic molecule. So if I were to draw the structure of ethene, you will notice there are many bonds between carbon as well as hydrogen. So maybe let's do a quick revision. Okay, if we focus on this particular bond, a CH covalent bond. Now, Mr. Yap, walk us through the process. What kind of overlap is this? All right, so the, to determine the orbitals involved in forming the bond, mm-hmm. you have to write the electronic configuration of the atoms involved in that bond. So for hydrogen, yes, only one valence electron, so it'll be 1s1. Carbon has six valence electrons, so it'll be 1s1, 1s2, sorry, 2s2 mm-hmm. and 2p2. So focus on the outermost orbital, so it's the 2p orbital. So it's 2p orbital of carbon overlapping with the s orbital of hydrogen. So this is what we call sp orbital overlap. All right, so this is the sp sigma overlap between a carbon and a h. And this is replicated four times across all the CH bonds, which is why if you look at the diagram below, you do notice there will be this spherical thing over here, which stands for the s orbital, right? So this is denoting all the s orbitals of hydrogen. And at the same time, you have your p orbital, which looks a dumbbell shape, mm-hmm. right? So you can see this is your sp sigma overlap between carbon as well as hydrogen. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look at the carbon-carbon bond, there are two bonds over there. Let's focus on the first one. Now, the first one is also a sigma bond. So this time round, it must be a pp sigma overlap which is what is being denoted over here. So this is going to be a p orbital for the first carbon, and this is the second p orbital. So you can see, again, they're doing a hit-on car crash. Now, what is of interest to us is actually the last bond, the one in blue right now. Now, this is going to be a pi bond. So a pi bond means a body and a body colliding against each other. So your focus will have to be this particular orbital over here, all right, the one which I'm shading in red. Okay, so this is one. And this is the second one. And what's happening, you can see the body and the body are moving closer towards each other. So in reality, you can see that there's a box on the right hand side. Now what's going to happen? The body and the body, they are moving closer and closer to each other until they begin to crash with each other. So you do notice these two points of connection is actually what we call one pi bond, right? One pi bond has two points of connection. Right, but for simplicity, what we can do is to simply draw it something like this to show how all the electron density is kind of uh, distributed in between the two regions in space. 
right? So this is how pi bond looks like. It's a little bit more difficult to draw, but just be mindful. It is going to be a side on overlap between the two orbitals. Okay, so to summarize, um, pi bonds can only be formed by p or d orbitals. Uh, you will only see p orbitals examples in A level, right? So S orbitals we always use to be form sigma bonds. All right. Now, a pi bond is always weaker than a sigma bond because the extent of overlap is smaller. A pi bond is a side-on overlap. A side-on overlap is less effective than a head-on overlap. Hence, a pi bond is always weaker than a sigma bond. Mm -hmm. All right. Then, if you look at the third bullet point, it's, uh, if you were to bring yourself to the diagram on the right-hand side, so as William mentioned, the electron density of the pi bond is concentrated above and below. So, if you, the middle line here is basically what people call the nuclear axis, where the nucleus is actually found. All right, so the electron density of the pi bond is actually above and below the nuclear axis. So that's an important point to take note of. Okay, now a pi bond can only be formed when a prior sigma bond has already been formed. In other words, pi bonds are only involved in what we call multiple bond formation. So for a normal single bond, it just consists of one sigma bond. But if a double bond, the first bond form is sigma, the second bond form is pi. Now in a triple bond, the first bond form is still sigma, the other two remaining bonds are then pi bonds. All right. So William, mm. so since sigma bond is more effective, right? The, over, uh, the overlap yes. is more effective. It's yep. a stronger yep. bond. Mm -hmm. So why don't we just all form sigma, uh, form sigma bonds? Right. This, this is a very good question, mm. which some of the students they like to ask. Like, why is a, the double bond not two sigma? Yeah. Since sigma is kind of better than pi. Everything sigma. Yeah. Why not all sigma? Now there's a reason for this, and we're going to use one very complex example to illustrate this. So if you look a little bit below, you do find that there's a triple bond between the two nitrogen atoms. Right, so if you work back on the basics, whatever Mr. Yap has explained to us just now, the orbitals that will be involved in the bonding will be the p orbital and the p orbital. So what's happening now is nitrogen and nitrogen must use their p orbital to do overlap with each other. Right, so if you return back to the chapter of atomic structure, p orbitals comes in three axes. Yep. What are the three axes? px, mm -hmm. py, and pz. Okay, good. So we take a look, right? px axis means that the orbitals are lying along the x axis. Okay, then the PY will be lying along the Y axis, and then obviously the PZ will be lying along the Z axis. Now just bear in mind the two nitrogen atoms. Let me call this nitrogen 1 and nitrogen 2. Now nitrogen 1 and nitrogen 2 must be using the same orbitals since they are identical mm -hmm. to each other. So imagine this, right? Nitrogen 1, this is the P orbital. Nitrogen 2, another P orbital. And nitrogen 3, uh, sorry, the, uh, another P orbital of nitrogen. Right, so if the two of them were to collide with each other, can you tell us which one looks like it's going to be a head-on and which one looks like it's going to be a side-on overlap? So from the way you draw it, it seems like, you see for the x-axis one, it seems mm -hmm. like they are going to approach each other head-on, right? So it's yep. like a head-on car crash. Yep. So yep. I would suspect that would be the sigma bond. Yes, you're right. Okay, so the px, px is very clear, it's going to be a sigma bond. What about the yy? So you see the yy, you realize that the two orbitals, they are so-called uh, parallel to each other, right? So they must undergo a side-on overlap then. So this has to be yeah, a, pi a, a pi bond, right? Yep. And I think the same thing happens yep. for the z and the z axis as well. So when they collide to each other, then there has to be the pi bond. Mm. So it's very much due to the shape of the p orbitals to begin with, because you have the px, py, and the p axis. So it's inevitable, mm. right? They will be forming the sigma first, then the other two bonds that were to come must naturally be the pi bonds. Right, so if you kind of digest this, now let's walk through that diagram on the left hand side. Okay, it looks very complex, but if you follow what we are telling you, right, the px, the py, and the pz, you will see this is what's happening. I'm going to use different colors to bring us through. Okay, first of all, we look at the x axis, right, you can see here this is my uh, px, one of them, and this is going to overlap with another px. So this is the head on overlap, we call this a sigma bond. Now, the second one, I'm going to use yellow, which is along the y axis. So you can see the y-axis and the y-axis. So what's happening now is they're going to do a side-on overlap. So this is going to be the first pi bond. And then the last one, which is your z-axis. So you can see in and out of the plane, thing three-dimensional. Yeah. right? So what's happening now, as you can see, is they're going to do another side-on overlap. So it looks complicated, mm. but if you break it down into three different colors, the three different axes, it's not too difficult to draw a diagram like this. All right. Okay. Now there's an example below. Come and say, walk us through this example. Okay. So the work example below gives you the bond energy of a carbon-carbon single bond, right? A carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, and a carbon-carbon triple bond. Okay. So you guys should know that for a single bond, there's only one sigma bond. Now for a double bond, the first bond form is sigma. The second bond form is pi. 
-hmm. For triple bond, the first bond form is sigma, the remaining two bonds will be pi bonds. Yep. So we all know that a pi bond is weaker than a sigma bond because the extent of overlap is less effective. And hence, if you notice the values of the bond energy, the bond energy of the double bond is not twice that of a sing uh, single bond, right? It's less than two times. And the bond energy for the triple bond is not three times that of a single bond, it's less than three times. And it's simply because a pi bond is weaker than a sigma bond. Right? So basically that's the work example. Alright, now Mr. Yap, before we end, right, mm -hmm. um, we, we have to let the students know that actually not every covalent bond is the same, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. some are pure and some are impure, impure right, right? Which actually brings us through the next portion of your notes. You'll see this term called intermediate bonding, which sounds very complex, yeah. but no worries, our friendly tutors in class will explain this to you. Right, so do revise your stuff, go through your homework questions, and then we look forward to seeing you in class. Okay, remember this, we are the, the Chemical Bonding Brothers! Brothers.